Alright, so my conclusion about daily driving a Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. Alright, so I'm going to let this thing idle for a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to daily drive my Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 all day today. And that's just because I'm always getting asked, is this thing a good daily driver? Is this thing reliable? And well, I don't drive this car often. I've only driven it around a thousand miles since I've gotten it. Uh, but I do got my set of opinions for the platform. So uh, first things first, got my Apple, drink my pre-workout. We're gonna be going to the gym. And uh, let's just see how the car runs today. I haven't driven it in a while. This thing does not like cold mornings. Come on, bro. <sighs> Is this a good daily driver? There's your answer. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Oh man, hopefully this vid doesn't end up with us on a tow truck. But uh, nah, we'll be fine. Honestly, I, I've never, Trusted Mitsubishi as a brand when it comes to reliability. That sounds so good. And that's just because I grew up in an era where Mitsubishi Eclipses were so cheap, so extensively modified without any sort of maintenance from previous owners that they have gotten, they basically got old enough to where they started breaking down a lot. And that's just because, you know, the DSM platform was out since, you know, late 90s early 2000s and uh, I got into Mitsubishi Eclipses out in 2012 so by that time Eclipses have already been modified beat on they were a great platform they were very popular for their time but what happens when a car is at least 10 years old has never been maintained no timing belt has ever been done things start breaking and I was basically involving myself in the community at that point in time to where I started gaining this stigma that Mitsubishis were unreliable. Evils were really coming out. They were unaffordable at the time. And well, 3000 GTs, they never really crossed my mind. I knew what they were. Um, they were actually quite cheap back then as well, just like Eclipses in 2012. And um, for me, I just prefer the Mitsubishi Eclipse. I think it's a, it's a better car. Sorry, it's just I'm very biased. It was my first project car. It was the car I've wanted since I was a little kid. And uh, as a Mitsubishi fan, the 3000 GT has always been one of the cars that I wanted, but I never really saw an opportunity to have one until I did. Uh, but I, I, I grew up around this stigma that Mitsubishis were unreliable. My Evo was really reliable to me until we took it to the drag strip. I broke the transmission, then we the clutch, and there was that. The 3000 GT, the story with this one is I got the previous owner, I let it sit since 2012. I got it in 2020, so it was sitting for practically eight years, right? So I don't know if this is a common issue with all 3000s or if it was just mine, but I had a very rusted gas tank. All my fuel lines were shots, fuel pressure regulator, fuel pump. Uh, fuel pump. Um, if, you guys, if you guys have been around the channel for a while, you guys already know the amount of fuel system issues I've had with this car since I've gone. I haven't really been able to drive it and that's just because it was always down due to a rusted gas tank, bad fuel pumps. I went through like five of them fuel pressure regulators, fuel lines, like we did a bunch of things just to kind of get it running right. And till this day, it's still not 100% done. I actually have all the parts to pretty much finish it off. Uh, but I just haven't had the time to touch the car. So all in all, I pretty much have 
the stigma that Mitsubishis are unreliable. Is it true? It's not gonna be the same for every person. If you're able to find a 3000 GT that has been properly maintained, that has been taken care of, it's mainly stock, it's not too extensively modified, I think you'll be okay. And I think the 3000 GTs have a better shot at that because I think more people modified the DSM platform, the Mitsubishi Eclipses and Eagle Talent because they were easier to work on. They had the 4G63. These were a little more complex when it comes to the 6G72. I don't think a lot of people wanted to throw hands on them and the people that did. You guys are brave souls because <laughs> um, I don't know. I think these are is it these these this is a platform that you just have to get used to working on and once you kind of do and you master it, you'll be okay. I have a couple buddies like that that they think working on these cars are so easy. For example, Ian. Um, but I pretty much grew up around the 4G63, right? So the 6G72 when I got the car was a complete stranger to me. I was very intimidated by it. We're getting hiccups. I lean out a little bit. It's like it's running out of fuel. It only happens in the mornings for some reason. Like in the afternoon, if I drive this car in the afternoon, it gives me no issues whatsoever. It's just right now in the morning because it doesn't like them. Um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, this, was, it, this car didn't do too well with me in the beginning. I think we're really reaching a point where it's like somewhat decently reliable. As you guys can hear, it's not 100% yet. Come on, car. Feels like it wants to cut off. But I'm gonna pull through the whole day with this thing. Whatever happens, happens, and uh, I think I think we just have to regain trust in our cars, and I think that only happens when you do all the maintenance, when you know what's done to the car, you know the car's been through the through the trenches with you, and uh, you pretty much switched everything out. Is the 3000 GT reliable? Yes and no. It just depends on the car you get. The stocker you could get it, the better, uh, the less miles, obviously. Uh, and just get some maintenance done. Uh, on the on the bad side of that is, if you're gonna if you don't know how to work on these, you're gonna have to take it to a shop, and not all the shops are gonna take you in. I've been rejected by shops before, and the shops that do, they know it's a specialty car. This is not a daily driver car. This is a car that it takes it takes someone that likes to live on the edge <laughs> uh, to own one of these, just because it, it it's really expensive. They're gonna surcharge you because it's a complex motor. Uh, there's no space in the engine bay, and a lot of people get intimidated by it. So if someone takes it in, they're gonna, they know they can charge you quite a bit just to fix it. Uh, so it, this is the type of car that's better for someone that is a DIYer, uh, has some sort of mechanical ability and knowledge that you know they can do a lot of things themselves. Uh, luckily, I have a lot of the SoCal 3S guys that have helped me with this car throughout the years, and uh, I'm blessed to have them because I know there's other areas in the states or in the world that you know maybe you guys don't have as many of these i mean these are pretty rare to see this thing always gets a bunch of attention because you just don't see these cars on the road uh but i can only imagine what it's like outside of california where it's you know they're a lot less common so it really just you, you gotta weigh the pros and the cons it's it's not cheap guys it's a very expensive car um, i think it's more expensive to repair and modify over an evo that's just see a lot um and you just, you just have to be ready, uh, especially considering the fact that they're, you know, they're at least 20 years old now. So you're gonna be spending money on maintenance either way. It's just uh, they're gonna need some work, and uh, you can't cheap out, man. Like, yeah, if you get a good deal on one that you got it for, like, let's say five grand, but it's super B, it's gonna take a lot more than if you would have just paid 20 grand for a clean one, right? So be very picky when you're looking at these. Just look at the records, look at the engine bay, look at what's done to it. If they have any sort of records for maintenance, it's plus. Uh, usually the 3000 GT and Stealth owners are a little more mature versus the uh, the DSM owners. Uh, that's just something I've realized with the demographics. Okay. On the pro side, this car gets so much attention everywhere I go. This car is the one that turns the most heads, breaks the most necks, gets the most thumbs up. And I don't think it's just because it's red, but I think it's just because it's, well, it's a 99 spec, right? It's a 98 with a 99 conversion, but this thing in person has such, an, it, it almost gives off like a certain aura, right? It's like a very exotic Japanese car and it's, it gives it old school vibes. I don't know how to explain it, but like basically when you see a 3000, 3000 GT in, in flesh, it just gives you a certain feeling, I don't know, especially this one. It's just every time someone is right by, they're like, wow, this is, a, it has a presence. So it's 
sounds amazing, it looks amazing. It's basically a cheap F40. I, I like to compare it a lot to the F40. The Ferrari F40 is actually my dream car. And I just kind of visualize myself <laughs> as, like, as if I was driving an F40 right now because it, it gives you a very similar feel. I feel like it's a very exotic, I don't know how to describe it, but I know it's not an F40, it's a Mitsubishi, but as a Mitsubishi aficionado, I think this is a, a the most exotic Mitsubishi you can probably buy. wondering it's a three inch downpipe uh, three inch uh, QTP cutout it's electronic and then uh, it's pretty much just like a no-name cat back exhaust all the way to the back so it's pretty much straight piped the cutout is pretty much what makes it a little bit louder there's less restriction uh, but it's just more for sound than performance in my opinion unless you know you're pushing some sort of high boost and you need that quick opening of the exhaust fumes right so just arrived to Ian's house I want to show you guys this little LED thing we're working on for the 3000 GT taillights uh, he's pretty much designing something for me to make inside to make the L I don't know if you guys have seen on their LEDs I go it's just one bar all the way across so I would have to get a different garnish and then I'll get the USDM ones make a set and then pretty much show you guys what it would look like so this is kind of like step one of the process and then from there we'll go home build a set which I still don't know how to 100% uh, but after some research I'm sure I can figure it out and then basically make it sequential have like a bunch of show modes like startup lights the cool stuff we kind of did with the Eclipse were more legit I want you to drive the 3000 GT I brought it for that reason I hate your shifter yeah same Dude, what is I don't know that doesn't feel right right that's there's no way that's it's a six speed yeah, I'm, I'm six speed this Oh, man. Well, it's been like this since I got it. Dude, how are you even driving this? I thought this was normal. I thought this was every 3000 GT. Oh, there, we, there we go. So, overall opinion. Needs more yeah, I need some more. Neglect the Evo, neglect the Eclipse, it's <laughs> only for Eclipses are so nice, look at that one. So, as you guys just saw right there, um, Ian was pretty much telling me that Karn definitely needs some love. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and come back with him in probably the following episode of the VR4, and then we'll go, we're gonna go ahead and swap out some things. All right, we're about to go pick up my friend Kim. We're supposed to hang out and I mean I guess this is part of my day so I'm kind of bring you guys along I don't know how she is behind camera but uh <laughs> I guess we'll find out no that is low 
Yeah, it's pretty low. I feel like I'm on four. You're in a race car. Oh, alone. So you want tacos? You want boba? I hate boba. <laughs> no way. We can't be friends. So the last time I went was I think two years before it shut down. I didn't think it was ever gonna shut down. Then didn't you go to a not scary farm? Yeah. It's tough a little. I see stuff there. Like bad? Like is in like scary or like it wasn't good? No, like it wasn't good. To me, I just really like, yeah, like nada se compara con Hollywood Horror Nights because obviously it's universal. I've never like, been there. Dinero, I know, I know, se todos. Yeah. You've never okay. I mean, I've seen videos. It's giving me that meal. I get scared. Are you being serious? Yeah, I'm scared <laughs> of that stuff. No, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Are you judging me? Pero para ir para Tijuana no te da nada de miedo. And no, Tijuana is different. Tijuana is a, a whole vibe. You don't think so? Mexico is a vibe. Yeah, Mexico is yeah. a vibe, exactly. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> wow, you're Mexican though. Yeah, I know. Yay, baby. Did you hear me pull up? No. You didn't? No. I was listening to music. Oh. Have you, uh -huh. have you gone out with other guys or what? Yeah, I'm casting. Ya te casaste? Andas casada y andas saliendo conmigo. Otra vez, ya. Yeah. <laughs> en México. ¿Tú o yo? Yo. Tú, ah, sí. Tú, tú como tres en México. No, 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 no. Zero kids, zero girls in Mexico. Zero. Mm -hmm. Yo te la creo. Créeme. Uh -huh. I mean, for real. Why don't we go next week? Two knots? Is it how much is it? I just <laughs> no, 50, 60, I don't know, max 70. I went on a Friday, no 70. I went twice already. But it's gonna be packed, huh? But that's, isn't it better when it's packed? Ended up breaking <laughs> my front lip last night. Kinda bummed out, dude. That's pretty bad. But it is what it is. I also had to uh <clears throat> pretty much disconnect the battery because um it's basically drawing battery because this guy right here isn't fully closing the door so it causes the bulb to stay on inside the car and therefore just draining the battery so we got to make some adjustments on that in the next video like i said we're going to be going with ian this thing's running filthy rich um again this goes back to is this thing daily drivable when you got a lip like that not so much. I'm kind of bummed out because they're really hard to get. Um, and it's probably my favorite lip for this car. So I don't know if that's even repairable. <laughs> so uh, we're about to head out to a meet out by LA. Um, this is pretty much it for the second day of driving it. But I want to give you guys a nice little POV drive with the GoPro. So at least you guys get to see how it looks like when you're driving it. this car is that it actually does spend a lot of gas I mean it's obviously running rich but the fact that it's a v6 for daily driving I don't really think it's too too functional right because I'm I daily drive a stock k20 with the RSX and it's pretty economical I get around 350 miles to the gallon and I only I fill, I fill it up with 50 bucks I put around 55 bucks on this thing already within the last day and I'm pretty much back on empty or close to it so I don't know man I don't know for my guys that daily drive their their vr force how is it like do you guys like it or is it bad like a really good cruiser 
and I think this is where it gets its GT term from because these cars are meant to be out in the open roads out for you to possibly travel somewhere or you know take them somewhere a little bit longer distances because they're extremely comfortable I really like how these stock seats feel uh, they still feel sporty but the car does feel like it's on a cloud uh, it might be the dampening with the coilovers as well I have the right action ones but uh, I don't know it's just it's it on freeway driving I love it it sounds sick I could easily downshift into four to gain some sort of power and kind of push it through a hill or something and it's just like it has no issues with that right so that's really what that's one really good thing that I would like in a daily driver right just super comfortable driving for freeway it's mainly freeway out here so it's just California so We all go through it. You guys know I love my M3, specifically the coupes, but sedans do pretty well, especially this generation, the E92 and E93. We got Pac Boy here. You know him. We did a mini dock on his MR2. This is different. Gee, yeah, we got a winner. Uh, all right. Where you at? My favorite torta pounder. Where you at? So sexy. Where you at? Four five six. Four five zero. Four five six. Yo, it looks clean today. <laughs> Get the detailer in the house. Yeah. The mandilon. Of course. <laughs> you know the rides are not free. You wash the car. Like, ah, no, you know, the keys to happiness or what? Or the keys to sadness? <laughs> the keys of death. The keys of death. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. It's a nice car. You like it? Yeah. It Pull out the, the baby oil. Reminds me of the Back to the Future car. What? How? I got the gauges here. got the big t screen TV right here. You can watch some, you know, your novella. <laughs> All right, guys. You have me on camera duties. I'm going to record these guys. Leave.
Alright, so my conclusion about daily driving a Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. Within the last two days, I noticed a lot of things about the car. I really feel like you have to drive the car for a while to really get to know how it is, its quirks, what's wrong with it, um, and kind of start fixing it that way because I noticed a lot of things that were wrong with it. Uh, we went out with Ian, he noticed that the car was running super rich, he noticed a bunch of details that needed to be sorted out. And uh, within the next video for this car, we're going to go ahead and take care of that just to make this car completely 100% daily drivable right so uh, honestly it's very capable I would definitely do it if I had to um, but it's just it's I know I would get annoyed just based off the really bad fuel smell I don't know if it's just mine I've had people tell me the same thing but uh, I'm driving it and it just feels like the fumes are kind of in your face and I have the windows down so um, that's something that definitely annoys me that would annoy me every day and uh, it kind of makes me tired because it's basically monoxide poisoning right so you have to be really careful with that um besides that of course we broke the front lip and it's bound to happen but it's like dude come on like it's been so clean for so long and it's just like it's a bummer so there's that uh it wastes a lot of gas it's a v6 twin turbo and i like to step on it and just kind of hear the decel it pops and bangs i'm not sure if it shoots flames out the back i really want to try like a 360 camera on it uh, and just do like a pov and then just have it like and although it does have those cons like honestly i feel much happier just overall just because i've been driving it the past couple two days and it's just because like one the amount of like i don't know it's just it brings you joy because you're driving it you're hearing it i think i think the noise has a lot to do with it. i just love how it sounds honestly i think this sounds better than the 4g63 and it just sounds so exotic to me dude i don't know why it just it, it sounds insane uh everyone's looking at you that's one thing you kind of kind of like if you're not used to it like you i swear these cars are just like neck breakers like crazy just because maybe you don't see them as often maybe because it's bright red maybe because it's stupid loud or a mixture of everything uh but it's just one of those cars that just garnishes a lot of attention so depending on the type of person you are uh you would rather get like a black to make it more low-key or bright red like me um i don't know if i would ever change the color uh this car is, is originally black but uh I don't know, I like the red. The red is like the OG color. I know it's the most common, but it's like, you don't see these anyway. So like when you see a red one in the streets, it's like, oh sick, like it's the 3000 GT, right? So it's just kind of cool to see these cars kind of gain popularity over time. And uh, if I'm able to help in some way or form to inspire others to maybe take care of one of, buy, buy one of these and take care of them, you know, down the road, that'd be sweet because uh, I think us as owners, us that have them now, I think we realize how much these cars are worth to us then that's just because of the type of feeling and just mix the things that they bring to us right so that's something that i've always had with all my cars it's just like i always make sure that every car i ever get it there's a purpose behind it there's a reason why i'm building it and there's definitely some even though you can't see it there's a sense of connection between you and each car right and, and every car is different anyways i'm going way off tangent here um i guess that's it uh if you guys let me know if you would daily drive your 3000 gt or if you do and how is it how you know does it get expensive is it bad uh but to me it's 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 doable i, I could definitely do it uh, it's just my preference not to and that's just because that's the way I am and I'm a little more I want something a little more tame for for everyday driving, but uh, I Don't know dude. It's like do you drive a Ferrari every day? I mean It's not the same thing, but I Don't know dude. I would have won an F40 and I think this is like as close as a Mitsubishi can get to an F40. So Anyways, I guess that's it uh, like comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next one